The tragedy of the Challenger accident and many other catastrophic events can be traced in part to the group decision-making process that leads to them. Among the causes of faulty group decisions, few have received more attention or study than in groupthink. Simply stated, groupthink is a mode of thinking in which group members' premature striving for agreement somehow overrides their ability to realistically appraise alternative courses of action. In the early 70s, renowned psychologist Dr. Irving Janis first identified groupthink and theorized it could be brought on by something he called group cohesiveness. Well, basically, a cohesive group is one whose members are very positive in their feeling toward the group and are very strongly motivated to retain their membership in the group. One of the consequences of high cohesiveness is a tendency for the members of the group to try to, to strive toward agreement. And this is a concurrence-seeking tendency that is at the core of groupthink. Since Dr. Janus first developed the groupthink hypothesis, psychologists have discovered a number of additional factors that can predispose group members to engage in groupthink. A highly insulated group with restrained access to outside ideas, a stressful decision-making context, such as that brought on by budgetary restraints, external pressure, or a history of recent setbacks. I think everybody's hooked up. Arnie Thompson and Roger Poitrelet have been doing the research. They'll make the presentation. The Air Force estimates 29 degrees at launch tomorrow morning. We have no data uh, on O-rings operating at temperatures this low. So determining if this extreme cold will affect the O-rings, and if it does, uh, how much is critical. So our recommendation is, uh, you should see it on the sheet coming through now, not launching until the uh, temperature is at least 53 degrees. Whoa. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. Am I looking at the right charts? Charts I've got don't support that conclusion. They do. Uh, I think they do. Well, you began by saying what you're presenting can't be proved. And I agree, it can't. But now you're drawing serious conclusions from it, and you're making very serious recommendations. Serious recommendations are called for. Well, of course, that's why we're here. But what you're saying sounds like Morton Thiokol is establishing new launch commit criteria the night before a launch. Now, these solid rocket boosters have been operating under very definite specifications. You suddenly want to change them. You now want to base everything on this 53-degree benchmark. At that rate, it could be spring before the shuttle would fly. My God, Thiokol, when do you want me to launch? Next April? Uh, I don't think we want to change launch commit criteria. We're trying to see if it's safe to launch with the O-rings uh, experiencing these severe temperatures. All I'm saying is that launching it below freezing is an act away from goodness. All I'm saying is we should go by our experience base, as limited as that is. And our experience base says that at 53 degrees or less, we can expect increased erosion and blow-by. Roger, it's my understanding that the solid rocket boosters are qualified by contract for operation between 40 and 90 degrees. This 53 degree specification would be setting a new benchmark. Are the solids qualified at 40 degrees or aren't they? It's a way from goodness to make any other recommendation. Listen, if being in the direction of goodness means wanting a successful result for this mission, I want that result. I, everybody involved in this telecon wants it. Be reassured, Roger, you are not in the direction of goodness by yourself. But we, we've got an engineering decision to make here. And it's got to be made on quantifiable data. Now, I, uh, I, well, I want to ask Joe Kilminster for his recommendation. Based on this presentation by our engineers here at Morton Thiokol, I can't recommend a launch. I think we should get George Hardy's comments. Well, let me ask first, does Thiokol have any more to transmit? Any further views? 
Because if not, I'm appalled that they could arrive at the recommendation not to launch given the data that's been presented, especially so late on the evening before a launch. I agree with Larry Malloy. I make the same assessment he does. But if Thiokol recommends not launching, I'm certainly not going to override it. <clears throat> We'd like to go offline for five minutes here and have a conference. All right. I want to make sure I've got this. The worry is the temperatures in the 20s or 30s could cause the primary O-ring to seal more slowly. If it did, we could get some blow-by. That's right. But don't we have some tests that show how the O-rings behave? We have tests showing that even if the blow-by cut 125 thousandths of an inch out of the O-ring, it would still seal. I'll tell you, it makes an impression on me if George Hardy says he's appalled at something we recommend. Yeah. I'll tell you that. This is Joe Kilminster. We've assessed the data and reviewed all our charts. Even though we had some concerns about the low temperatures, we now recommend proceeding with the launch. Does anyone in the loop have a different position? <laughs>